And now, two guys who survived a complaint from the Better Business Bureau for bringing too much sexy back to survival, Aaron and Jonathan. In this episode, we go deep into the IT Rage Vault to hear a classic not available in the public feed, episode 38. You'll hear from the late, great Scout, head of the Texas chapter of Project Appleseed. And I'm joined by my co-host, Jonathan, who helped found IT Rage. We all discuss what I still consider the best traditional rifle marksmanship program in the country. Howdy and welcome to In the Rabbit Hole's Urban Survival Podcast. This is episode number 185. We're your hosts, Aaron and Jonathan, and you are in the rabbit hole, safe and sound. Before we get started, I want to reiterate that this is a rebroadcast. Now, I have redone the intro and outro of the show, obviously, but the main show is untouched. That brings up one other thing listeners should note. Unfortunately, Scout did pass away a little over a year ago in a car accident, but Project Appleseed does live on and is very active across the country. So, with only a few exceptions, the resources mentioned in this episode should still hold true. Two things made me pick this episode for today. We have several ITRH Armada members getting ready to go to Project Apple Shoots, and it reminded me we just don't give our much-loved organization enough airtime as of late. The second reason is the same for the rebroadcast this week and next, as Jonathan and I will be getting into some shenanigans here. Anyway, without further ado, let's go back in time for an ITRH classic. A couple of years ago, I jumped in my truck and headed up a couple hours northwest to see about this organization that called itself Project Appleseed and promised to turn me into a rifleman if I showed up and did my part. Uh, I wasn't sure if they were militia or not, or, but all I knew is this city boy badly needed to be taught some good old-fashioned rifle skills. However, I not only left with those skills, I also got a lesson on something I wasn't expecting. So without further ado, Scout, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, sir. Thanks for having me on. And uh, don't feel alone with the the worry. Uh, Anytime you hear any type of a rifle marksmanship program, uh, you know, or, or a group of folks getting together to, uh, to learn about history or rifle marksmanship or something. There's always that, uh, you know, that, that worry that it might be something that you don't want to get into. And I had the same thing. I even told my wife before I, I went to my first event, she asked me how long I was going to be gone. And I said, well, I'll either be back at the, at the end of the event or within 24 hours after seeing the, uh, the first swastika or a Heil Hitler salute. <laughs> and, uh, and I was happily, uh, uh, I was very pleased to learn that it's, it's nothing at all like that. And that was my first introduction to it, uh, I guess, a, a little over five years ago. Well, and uh, Hey, Scout, for our listeners that aren't familiar with Appleseed, can you give them a, just a quick and dirty of, um, of what it is? Right. The Appleseed Project is the sole project of the Revolutionary War Veterans Association. And the Revolutionary War Veterans Association was started in order to teach the absolute best fundamentals of rifle marksmanship program in the United States today to, in order that we can carry on the, the legacy of rifle marksmanship, which is one of the few things we actually share with the, the founders. And at the same time, uh, and the reason that it says the Revolutionary War Veterans Association, it's in a bunch of folks in, uh, in frilly shirts, prancing around and drinking tea and stuff. This is, uh, the organization was formed in order to honor those who have come before us. And the way you honor somebody is to remember them. And that's what we do at the Rifle Marksmanship events. In addition to getting two solid days, a rock-solid foundation of rifle safety and rifle marksmanship, you also get normally at least an hour, hour and a half, broken up into several segments of history 
of the men and women who stood together in ranks on April 19, 1775. That's the, the date that our nation began, and it began at, at the Green in the town of Lexington, and then uh, continued on with the events at the North Bridge in Concord, and then along Battle Road back to Boston the rest of that day. We're going to talk to you about what happened on April 19th, uh, why it happened, who the major characters and players were, and what they did. So that you'll have an understanding of the events that occurred on April 19th, 1775, which is the, the birth of our nation. So you're going to get a rock-solid foundation in rifle safety. You're going to get a, a two solid days of the fundamentals of rifle marksmanship. And when I say fundamentals, I want to make sure that folks understand that fundamentals are not the basics. All right? The basics are... This is the butt stock, and it goes on your shoulder. And here, this is the barrel, and the bullet comes out this end. And and don't get the two reversed or, or mixed <laughs> up. Uh, the fundamentals are the things that you're going to need, no matter where your shooting path takes you. This is stuff that that has taken a lot of people 10, 20, 30 years to learn on their own by picking up in bits and pieces. We're going to give it to you in one weekend, and uh, we do this all across the United States, every weekend of the year, there is an Appleseed Project rifle marksmanship event going on somewhere in your state within a reasonable driving distance of you. And the Appleseed Project is an all-volunteer, it's a grassroots, uh, not-for-profit organization, uh, and it's run by just regular Americans who have uh, gone to an event decided they liked what they saw, and then put themselves on a path to becoming an instructor. And we have some of the best instructors uh, in the nation. They are very highly skilled at what they do. Most of the instructors uh, are running at 100-plus hours of, uh, of teaching before they become full instructors, and they do, we do an absolutely fantastic job. And we've really geared ourselves up for folks who have – no familiarization with firearms, or folks who have uh, little to none, or they're coming back into the shooting sports. But if you have no, if you don't have a background in shooting, if you've never shot before, we're one of the, I would say we're the absolutely best organization uh, to contact to get instruction from, because it's one of the niches that we've really grown strong in. If you're a woman or a child, then we have... Uh, We've gotten really good at teaching women and children. Not to say that we're still not the best for teaching anybody in any of the categories. But we have folks that show up on a weekend to learn, and they will run the the level of the their skill levels will run from never having touched a firearm to having shot uh, in competitions for ten, twenty years, thirty years, and they all learn something when they come to an event. Well, awesome. And you mentioned safety, and I know for a lot of people, that's something that they need to either learn more about, or it's something that they're concerned about. Can you kind of run us through a little bit about the safety briefing? Well, certainly. And that's one of the kind of the overlooked bennies of going to an Appleseed Rifle Marksmanship event, is that we, uh, we are very, very safety conscious. We've written all of the courses of instruction, all of the program is designed around the number one, the prime consideration of safety. So when you come to an event, you're going to, you're not going to just going to get the rifle marksmanship. You're going to get two solid days of rifle safety. We're going to teach you how to safely uh, and competently handle your rifle, how to conduct yourself at a range uh, when, you know, when you're shooting with other people and how to... Uh, ensure that your rifle is indeed a safe rifle. And the techniques that we use to, to do this, for, to teach you the shooting, the safety, all of that, none of this is brand new stuff that we just cooked up all of a sudden and we said, hey, let's try this. Let's, uh, let's experiment uh, on a bunch of folks who come and see if this works or not. All of the techniques and skills that we're going to be working with you are skills that have been boiled down and distilled down through uh, 500 years of firearms usage. The safety starts right off the bat. When you come to an event, we don't know what uh, what your background in shooting is. And so in order to make it safe for everybody, we uh, 
the folks will come to an event. We'll ask them to bring all their gear down to the line, minus their rifles, and then we'll give the safety briefing, and then we'll go out with them and bring the rifles back. And, and listen, none of this is uh, mollycoddling or babying you, all right? Like I said, because it's because that we have a great deal of brand-new shooters that are showing up at events. And believe me, you want us to be safe. You want to make sure that you have a pleasurable event and uh, that there are no uh, safety accidents or safety issues. So we'll go, we'll do a safety briefing, get the folk, get their rifles down to the line, and then we'll begin, uh, we'll begin shooting. And it's a very structured course, so nobody's ever messing with rifles or goofing around with their rifles or anything like that. Everything is a very structured, uh, a very well thought out course uh, going at a pretty good speed. Scout, we've talked about Appleseed a lot on the show, and one of the questions we get a lot is, uh, are there any political affiliations? Well, no no political affiliations that are any newer than 230 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Appleseed is, uh, has no politics in it. Great. We don't do any politics. And we ask for you folks that have come to the events, we ask you to leave your politics at home, too, because uh, there's really no place for them there. Appleseed and rifle marksmanship and the story of our nation's founding belongs to everybody. It doesn't matter what, uh, what kind of a, uh, a letter you'd want to put in front of or in back of your name. It doesn't matter because we're not, we're not concerned with that. We're concerned with making sure that folks understand how to safely and correctly handle their rifles, and that they understand about the folks who came before them, about the, the long line of people who stood before them from April 19, 1775 until now, that we owe a huge debt to. And that's one of the reasons that we do this. And we're trying to repay our debt. And in the Revolutionary War, there were folks of all political backgrounds. And yes, there was plenty of politics back then, just as there is now. There were folks from all political backgrounds. There were folks who believed in God. There were folks who didn't believe in God. And yet they all participated in, uh, in helping to forge the nation that we now live in. And we feel the same way. Just as the Constitution belongs to all Americans, so does Appleseed. So does the, the right and, and the, uh, the need for folks to learn rifle marksmanship and to learn about their history. So don't worry about uh, coming to any events. Matter of fact, I, I enjoy having folks from all political persuasions, men, women, children, and we get uh, plenty of folks from different countries who have come to the United States and are now citizens. And uh, let me tell you, those folks, when, we, when we're talking about safeguarding the rights the freedoms that living this nation affords you. They, they are listening uh, very carefully because they've experienced living in countries where they did not have the rights and freedoms that we have. They are, uh, they are well aware of what we take for granted, that our freedoms and liberties are not, uh, they are not so chipped out of stone that we can't lose them. We can. We could lose them very easily, and it's the duty, uh, the sacred responsibility of each and every American citizen to ensure that those rights and freedoms are safeguarded. And, uh, and we, we talk to folks about that at events, too. But safeguarding freedom, safeguarding your rights and liberties is something that all American citizens uh, have the responsibility for. No, no political party uh, has any, uh, uh, any corner on that market. Yeah, we. I've always talked to friends and family when I talk to apple talk about apple seed with them as it's really a celebration of one of the greatest American traditions, and and that's when you boil it down to that, people start to get it. I think, and uh, it's just it's a fantastic event, and it does just reflect on one of the best things about American history. And you know, we talked about it. We were for those of you who are out there from our listeners, we were on um, on Scout's show just a few days ago. And one of the things we talked about towards the end was with every right comes responsibility. And this concept of understanding, understanding a firearm, understanding what is your right to bear arms? What does that actually boil down to when it comes to a responsibility and, and knowing how to shoot 
makes it just such a great event that you're by by learning how to shoot, you're defending your right to bear arms. Right, and just like you said, every every right, every freedom. Hey, listener, do you get at least three dollars of value out of ITRH every month? Well, you should see what we give to the Armada members. Check it out today by visiting itrh.net. Members get access to episodes a day early. And when you join, you'll receive an invitation to the secret ITRH Armada Facebook group so you can chat about survival with myself and other Armada members all day long. Get a free copy of the book, Owning Your Survival, so you can have a plan and do it right. Access to our famous Bob and Emergency Kits on-demand class. Make that perfect bag. Learn what to obsess over and more importantly, what not to obsess over. Our insane ammo inventory spreadsheet. You'll finally have instant access to knowing what you've got on hand at any time. Access to every episode ever produced by ITRH, including one with a famous knife maker, which was never aired. And that's just to name a few things. Remember to visit ITRH.net to get more benefit and help the show stay safe and sound, which helps you stay safe and sound. Now, back to today's guest. Right, and just like you said, every every right, every freedom, every liberty, and every decision you make now or will ever make in your life, every single one of those has a price tag that comes with it. Yep. Every single one of those has a responsibility. You have a right to keep and bear arms, and within that right comes the responsibility to do so uh, in a safe manner, in a responsible manner. And just because you have a right to do something doesn't mean you have a right to do it uh, irregardless of anybody else's safety or any of the, uh, anyone else's well-being, etc. Right. And that's one of the things that we're going to be teaching you, is how to conduct yourselves correctly, how to conduct yourself properly and safely with a firearm when you're at a range or when you're shooting, and how to make sure that uh, your, your family members do the same. And Appleseed is very family friendly. Just as we do, uh, we don't do any politics. We don't do any training either. And what I mean by training is we don't, we don't teach you, we're, you're not doing, we're not teaching you anything for you to use at a later date. There's no, uh, no tactics, no malicious stuff, no playing army, anything like that. This is all a very family friendly, uh, and a safe environment. And we don't teach you how to do anything except learn how to shoot your rifle safely and correctly. Nothing else is there. We'll teach you about history, but we don't do any training, and, uh, and there's certainly no type of uh, indoctrination or anything like that. Yeah, I think that was one of the, the things that really struck me when I first got there was the distinction and the hard distinction you'll make between instruction and training. And I think you even gave a, a really elegant speech about how our rights our forefathers already used a rifle to defend our rights, but that's that's not the point of Appleseed. Exactly the the whole point of Appleseed is is to celebrate what the the men and women who stood together on April nineteenth did for us now for for the people who came after them. They sacrificed their their health their fortunes, and uh, for a great many of them, uh, 2% of the American population, they sacrificed their lives. And, uh, and it was not so that the people in the future would have to do it again and again and again. They did it so that we wouldn't have to. They got together, and I, I tell you what, one of the things that I, uh, that I had learned soon after after becoming a part of Appleseed because I started reading about the history and and I really started reading the founding documents is if you look at the the absolutely brilliant documents that were crafted by the founders the uh, Declaration of Independence the Bill of Rights the Constitution of these United States it, uh, I, I I think it'd be hard for us to to comb through the population today and find that, that kind of brilliance uh, on, on, on hardly any levels that we have now. Those documents were absolutely brilliant. And the reason that they were crafted was so that we would not have to use force of arms in order to change our government again. They didn't have any choice. 
the folks uh, in 1775 didn't have any choice. They had they they had used every uh, every resource they had available to address what they considered the wrongs brought upon them by the by the government, and they found they had no other recourse but force of arms, and they did that. Now we don't need that today. We have a government that was put together by these guys who said, look, how can we fix this government? How can we set up a system of governing so that we would never have to do that again? And that's what they did. And I tell you what, I'm, I'm 100% positive that if you went back to April 1970, 1775 and you told them, listen, we got two directions we can go in this. We can, uh, we can either all stand here together on the line and the, 35 to 40 of us, we can go ahead and fight these 900 British regulars. And, uh, you know, who knows what the outcome will be, right? They, they could have said that. They knew what the outcome was going to be. We can go ahead and fight these guys right here now, or we can all go home and we can all write a letter to our congressmen and our senators, and we can all get involved in a serious way with changing the way that the government is responding to the people. And, uh, the first method, the method of uh, of using deadly force. Now that means that uh, they're going to have to be shot at. They're going to have to shoot at people just by standing together in ranks. That has already certified them as treasonous and marked them as traitors with the sentence of death on each of their names. If they do get shot, then uh, and they're not killed. If they're not lucky enough to be killed. There's no 911, there's no life life, there's no hospitals, no anesthetics, no uh, antibiotics, nothing. And uh, if they get captured, then they'll be hung. That is the, the first method they can use, or they can use the second, which is, which at the time they didn't have that. But if they would have, I guarantee you they would have used that. The problem with today is that we are all ignoring the second method. We're all ignoring our responsibility to be the government. You know, whenever you, I tell folks that come to an event, I go, look, the president is not the government. Your senators, the congressmen, uh, they are not the government. All of the alphabet acronym agencies, they are not the government. The, the, the founding documents very clearly spell out who is the government. We, the people of these United States, the people are the government. The rest of all those folks, they're just your representatives. They're just up there to do your bidding, and if they don't, then you remove them. You, we should not be required to go before our senators and congressmen on bended knee and beg a boon of them. We should be telling them, hey, you work for us. You work for me. You're a public servant. You're not a rock star. You're a public servant, and you need to listen to what we're saying. You need to do what we're saying, or the, you, you need to find something else to do. And Americans aren't doing that. They're not doing their job. They're supposed to be involved in running the government, and they're, they're no longer doing their jobs. They're leaving it to somebody else. Yeah, I mean, that, that is... One of the uh, things we talk about a lot with personal responsibility, taking responsibility within your community and and uh, and really pushing that up even into federal elections with with all that, though. So one of the things that I enjoyed about the tradition of Appleseed and everything is the way you described, you know, I think somebody in in the uh, the boot camp that I, I didn't go to a boot camp in the weekend event that I went to talked a little bit about, you know, being a better shooter and. They wanted to shoot like a sniper. And, and you were talking about, no, we're all about being a rifleman and the tradition of the rifleman. So can you go into a little bit, what is a rifleman? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's not a sniper. Not to say that a, that a rifleman could not put themselves on the path to becoming uh, a sniper if they so chose to do so. That, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to set yourself on a certain path uh, which is what you said, which is the path to becoming a rifleman. Yeah, if you come to a an Appleseed weekend, first off, we're going to teach you about the mechanics of shooting. We're going to teach you from the bottom up. We're going to teach you about slings. We're going to teach you the importance of building a solid, steady position. 
Uh, we're going to teach you about the steady hold factors. We're going to teach you about the six steps to making the shot. We're going to teach you about natural point of aim. We're going to teach you about uh, inches, minutes, and clicks, how they pertain to your rifle. Uh, we're going to teach you about the rifleman's bubble, the rifleman's dance. We're going to teach you about uh, talking targets and how they, how you should never take another shot in your life at a range or anywhere else, once we've taught you this, without getting feedback from your targets. We're going to teach you all the mechanics of this, along with, and people tell me all the time, they say, you know, I'd like to go to an Appleseed event, but really I'm more interested in practical rifle. And I'll tell them, I'll say, okay, you mean something like, uh, oh, well, it's something where you take, uh, you have to learn to shoot in different positions uh, along with doing magazine changes and then shooting at multiple targets under the stress of time constraint. And they go, yeah, something more like that. And then I laugh because... That's exactly what we teach you at Appleseed. We're going to teach you the mechanics of doing it, and then we're going to teach you how do you do that in a practical way. We're going to teach you to shoot in uh, standing, seated, and prone. We're going to teach you how to do magazine changes in the course of fire. We're going to have you shooting at multiple targets within the course of fire. And uh, this is all going to be done under the constraints of a time limit. So we're going to be pushing you to do all of this and to learn all the mechanics of it. And then we'll be testing you by the end of the day Saturday and then most of the day on Sunday. We'll be testing you with a diagnostic tool that we use called the Army Qualification Test. That's the old 40-round, uh, four-stage test that they use. All right, now this is all the mechanics of it. And then we'll teach you about the history during the course of the day. And if you shoot to a score of 210 or above out of a score of 250 on the AQT, then you'll be awarded a rifleman's patch. And that's just to let everybody know that you shot to 210 or above on the AQT. But I tell folks when, when I give them the patch that getting the patch doesn't make you a rifleman. It means that you've shot the rifleman standards. But it doesn't make you a rifleman. You're a rifleman when you understand what Appleseed is about. And... When I first started with the program, I thought, you know what? This program is all about rifle marksmanship. It's all about teaching you how to shoot safely and correctly. And uh, if you're going to shoot to 210 or above on the AQT, that means you have to shoot to a standard of four minutes of arc. So the program is all about shooting accurately. And then after a little while, I realized, this, you know, it's really not, it's really not the, the sole focus of what we do. Really, what we do is we teach folks, we teach them to shoot, but what we're really talking about here is the history. And then after being in the program a little bit longer, I realized that that's really not, uh, that's not, really not the sole focus either, that being a rifleman, being in the program and being a rifleman, you don't have to be in the program to be a rifleman, but being a rifleman simply means that you're becoming the best person that you can be. You become the best family member, the best father, the best son, the best husband. You are becoming uh, the best member of your community that you can be, and you're becoming the best American citizen that you can be. So really, it's just, it's a journey on mastering your rifle, mastering and understanding of what we as a nation what we intended to do when we started, and then becoming a master of being the absolute best person you can be. And let me tell you that a lot of the folks, uh, I've met the best folks I've ever known at Appleseeds. The folks who come to Appleseed events are simply the best folks uh, America has to offer. And many of them are are well on their way to becoming the best people they can be before they even get to an apple seed. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one of but, the things I liked about it, the that camaraderie, that tradition, all those pieces of what it means to becoming a rifleman was really more about the community aspects, the being the best person you can be, the being a, you know, a good camp mate. <laughs> all of that was part of the uh the weekend and uh it, it was fantastic. 
and that's one of the draws on it. And that's one of the draws of the program. And and I'm, I I joke with folks about this is that look if you've got uh, if you get yourself in a situation where you don't have a lot of uh, really good friends, you know, if you got the kind of friends that uh, uh, they borrow tools and don't bring them back, or that uh, <laughs> borrow money and never repay you, or you ask you you want to go to the range and they say, nah, I'm, I'm you know I'm I'm playing uh, whatever video game I'm playing, I'm I'm playing the video game or something, and and you say, man, I, I just about had it. How did I ever get stuck with this kind of a friend anyway? Well, you come to an apple seat. Listen, we'll we'll put you on the line with about uh, 25 to 35 other great candidates. To replace your crappy friends, and uh, <laughs> and there are lots of women now that come to apple seeds too. And and what better way to uh, what better place to find a, a lovely young lady who is, who would enjoy shooting than uh, than at an apple seed? So I, I joke about that, but you know there there are plenty of folks. Uh, all my friends now are all apple seed folks. I mean, I still have some from from the younger days, some good friends, but the majority of them now are apple seed folks because the quality of the apple seed folks are, are really high. And each one of these folks, the folks that end up staying all the way till Sunday, uh, there at the end of the day, they've shot all the way through to Sunday, and we go through the benediction on Sunday, and then we release the crowd, and, and there's usually a dozen or more folks that are still standing around because because they don't want it to end. They don't want... They don't want the fact that they found a bunch of folks who feel the same way that they do about uh, their nation. They don't want that to end. And I'm not talking about folks that are hyped up. Uh, nobody's nobody's standing around stomping their feet and clapping, yelling USA, USA. <laughs> we're we're standing around talking about how can we how can we best serve our nation now? How can we best fix the things that are wrong in the nation? How, how can I personally get involved? And that's one of the things that drew me to it is I got tired. I live out in the middle of nowhere. And I got tired of banging on my TV and pulling my hair out by looking at the things that were going on in the nation and, and then asking myself, what, how, what, what can I do to help? I'm out here in the middle of nowhere, and what, what possible way do I have of helping to fix, helping to make right what's going wrong in the nation, and and this is what I found works best for me. I'm not saying that uh, apple seed is perfect for everything, because it's not. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect for you. Uh, I'm just saying that it's everybody's duty to find what works for them, and and then work at that. Find what works for you. If you if you do better with uh, the Tea Party. Uh, then work with that. If you do better working with the uh, Democratic Party, then you do that. Or if you do better working with, with any other volunteer group, then that's what you should do. For me, it turned out to be apple seed. And for a lot of folks, that's what's working for them. I'm just saying you have a duty to plug yourself in and make this a better nation, uh, and you need to do it where, wherever it works for you. And the only way you're going to know if apple seed works for you or not is to come to an event and uh, – and give it a uh, give it a test ride if it's something that you want to be involved with. Yeah, Scott, we agree 100%. I mean, a lot, everybody needs to give apple seed a shot and one of the things I'm going to ask you, you know, we're going to we hear this a lot and we try to answer it as best we can, but I'd I'd like to hear your answer too. It's we hear things like I can shoot well enough or I've been hunting my whole life and I shoot and I I don't have any problems shooting there. So, for those people, what can they gain from learning about traditional rifle skills? Well, First off, let me tell you that I, I've been doing this for a long time now. And in the years leading up to this, first of all, I thought I was a pretty good shot. You know, I went through the uh, – and, and you know what people tell me? I've been in the military, so I know how to shoot. And, I, and for me, for you to tell me that you've been in the military and you know how to shoot, that's like the biggest uh, story that you can tell me because I was in the military. And for one thing, I think it's a, to me it's absolutely ridiculous. you got this – You've got this army, these group of men who are uh, who have been given the responsibility of defending our nation, and uh, and they're supposed to do with a rifle, and they get no training in it, or very very little. Uh, I spent six years in until the very end of my my time in when I was actually had weaseled my way into uh, the special ops community. I got very very little 
training with the thing that was supposed to stand between my nation and my nation's enemies, which, like I said, I thought was, it's, it's just comical. So folks that have said that tell me I've been in the military, so I don't, I don't need to go. That's, that's not going to, that's not going to uh, hold any weight for me. But I've even had people tell me, listen, my son's uh, a Marine and he's a sniper. So, and uh, that's good, I guess, for him. <laughs> but uh, I'm talking to you right now today. <laughs> and then plenty of people that tell me, yeah, you know, I hunt. I've been hunting since I was a kid. Well, I have too. And I'll tell you, there is a big difference between shooting uh, uh, an animal that is 50 to 75 yards away. And, and I know that everybody is going to tell me that uh, they never shoot a deer under uh, three or four three to 500 yards. <laughs> and uh, that's just in their mind because <laughs> they, nobody, nobody shoots a deer at 500 yards. Well, they, they can. I'm just saying that the run of the mill person doesn't shoot a deer at 500 yards. And a deer is about uh, three and a half. You've got about a three and a half to four foot uh, wide target one way and about a two foot target, uh, you know, the other way. So you've got about uh, six to eight square feet that you can hit in there. <clears throat> Now, shooting also is a perishable skill. That means if you take your rifle home, you put it in the closet, along with your any uh, uh, practice or uh, instruction that you got, you put it in that closet, your instruction is going to get just as rusty as your rifle does. Shooting is a perishable skill, and yes, unless you use it, you're going to lose it. And the other thing that I talked about at the very beginning is that you may be a decent shot. There are plenty of people that uh, never went to any uh, courses to shoot, and they shoot to Olympic standards. But that's like uh, one in uh, 300, 400,000 people. We're going to teach you to shoot down to uh, a very easy standard of accuracy, which is four minutes of arc. That means that uh, we're going to teach you to shoot into a four-inch circle at 100 yards with a rack-grade rifle, iron sights, and surplus ammunition, okay? That's our standard there. <clears throat> That's pretty tight. That's a pretty tight standard of accuracy because that, what that means is that whenever you shoot to rifleman standards, you're, you're shooting so that you have the ability to make that 500-yard shot with iron sights, all right? And I, like I said, I know there are people that all the time that tell me what a great shot there is, that, what a great shot they are. And sometimes they come to events, but usually they don't. But I'll tell you this right now, that I've done a, a ton of events. I've, uh, I've watched over a 1,000 folks come through, and it didn't matter what they all said about how good a shot they were. Uh, I find out how good a shot they are uh, right there first thing Saturday morning when we shoot the first uh, set of targets called the Redcoat targets. I find out who can hit a... Uh, uh, like a man-sized target at 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards, and 400 yards right then and there. Because we do the, we'll shoot the red coats as soon as folks get there without any instruction because that's a diagnostic tool for us. We want to see how, what skills the people brought with them. And I'm telling you right now that uh, out of the thousands of people that have come through, <clears throat> and many of them had listed on their, uh, their pre-registration stuff that, uh, that they were uh, good to excellent shooters. Out of all those people, there is probably only uh, uh, between one and zero for every uh, every 35 people that show up in an event. They can actually shoot to 400 yards. More more likely is you'll get 20 of the 40 folks that show up that show up can shoot to 100 yards, and the other 20 can't. And these are folks who think that they're pretty good shots. Mm -hmm. And you will learn very quickly how good a shot you are when you show up in an event. Now, don't, don't let me scare prospective attendees with that uh, <laughs> because the apple seed in the competition. Nobody, we don't look at each other's targets and see how, they, how each other did. And we don't say, yeah, look at you. I thought you were a good shooter and you can't even shoot to 100 yards. We don't do that. Uh, basically, you're... Everybody only really cares about their own target uh, at an event. So you can come to an event, and like I said, it's not a competition except with yourself. 
But people, there is a big difference between what you think you can shoot and what you can really do. You know, before I started with the program, I'd have people tell me all the time, oh, yeah, I can put, uh, I can put five rounds through a playing card at 500 yards. And I used to think, wow, that's, in, that's I, I guess so. Okay. You know, it seems like some pretty decent shooting. I guess they could do it. Now I'm telling you that there may be one out of, uh, of 5,000 people out there that can put five rounds through a playing card at uh, 500 yards. All right. And we're not interested in making folks snipers. What we're interested in is giving you the fundamentals of shooting. We are not even uh, we're we're not even obsessed with as obsessed as we should be, I guess, with making sure that everybody who walks in walks out with a rifleman's patch. Because what we're trying to do in these two days is not get you to shoot to two ten or above. I mean, we are, but that's not our main goal. Our main goal is to make sure that you understand all of the fundamentals. So that if you never go to another apple seed, we have still put everything in your mind in order for you to finish teaching yourself to shoot to a rifleman's standard of accuracy. So that you won't have to go to a range anymore and wonder what to do when you get there. Most people go to the range. They take their 20-pack of shells with them. They'll put up some kind of uh, you know indeterminate type of target. They'll put it up. They'll look around, they'll sit down at the bench, and they'll kind of like shrug their shoulders and start shooting. And, uh, and hopefully by the end of those 20 rounds, they'll, they'll have one or two in the black, and then they'll go down, they'll look at their target, and they'll kind of look around to see what's going on around them. And, and then they'll just go, well, okay, I don't, I don't know what else I'm supposed to be doing. And they'll get their target, and they'll take it back to their car, and they'll go home. They'll wait till next year to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Scout, one of the things I noticed about the shoot that I thought was great was that uh, everybody who was there improved, but everybody who was there definitely saw improvement, and that was that was one of the best parts of the shoot. That, that being said, uh, are the instructors going to act like dr- drill instructors? Are they going to yell at me to get me to improve? How's that going to work? Most of the time they don't yell at the folks because we have a standard issue... Uh, uh, 75,000 volt electronic cattle prod to, <laughs> Perfect. to save our voices. <clears throat> no, no, the, the instructors, you got to remember the instructors are the folks who came to the apple seed uh, a few months before. There are folks who could come to an apple seed maybe six months ago. And uh, just like you, just like me, just like, uh, Anybody, any of the rest of your buddies, some of them will have military backgrounds, some will have law enforcement backgrounds, uh, some will have a librarian backgrounds. We've got nuclear scientists, uh, physicists. We've got folks who own uh, theatrical businesses, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, they are only interested in passing on the information that they received and that they were grateful for to you in a uh, in a very friendly fashion. We don't we don't allow any uh, drill instructor stuff. Uh, there's no talking down to the students. There's no uh, none of that. It's all done in a very uh, casual, friendly type atmosphere. Now we do run it pretty pretty tight because of safety. And because we've got a lot of stuff we've got to, to teach you. But nobody's going to be yelling at you or talking down to you. No, <clears throat> nobody's going to be talking bad about your rifle. It doesn't matter, <laughs> uh, doesn't matter what you bring. Matter of fact, Appleseed is one of the, the organizations where it's, it's almost like a badge of pride for you to have a, you know, an older model rifle that, uh, without a scope and uh, without any kind of fancy shooting gear. You don't need a big uh, golf cart to to, uh, <laughs> to bring all your gear down to the line or anything like that. It's, the less tactical, the better. Yeah, exactly. And, and listen, if you want to be, if you want to come tactical and do that, that's fine. That's up to you. Yep. I'm just saying that, uh, that nobody's going to yell at you about your rifle as long as you're handling it safely, and nobody's going to talk down to you because we're all everybody here is a volunteer. They volunteer to do this, not 
not so that they could uh, uh, harass or harangue anyone. It's because they honestly believe that they're serving their nation by passing on the skills uh, and techniques that will make you a better rifle marksman and a safer rifle marksman, and in their ability to tell the story. And that's what we call telling the history. We call it telling the story. And uh, if you want to become a, a apple seed rifle marksmanship instructor, if you want to become a full instructor, then you have to know how to tell the story. You've got to know how to tell the, the history to the folk. If you can't tell the history correctly and passionately, then then you're probably not ever going to be a full instructor. And uh, But they're all volunteers, and they're all good folks. And uh, like I said, we got... Uh, you don't have to be a uh, on leave from your Marine Corps barracks in order to make it through the course. Uh, you can be a uh, you can be a homeschooling family uh, with your uh, with your two ten uh, year old kids, and uh, you will make it through the course fine. Yeah, I think when I was uh, teaching at a shoot in Smithville, we actually had a mother and her I think she had six or seven kids that showed up for a whole day and just loved it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, we we've, we've become very good, very good at teaching brand new shooters. And what we'll do is we'll have uh, the parents, we'll have the the parents and the kids. We'll usually we usually have them separated, just because that will allow the parents to come to the event and enjoy their time here learning too, without having to try and teach their kids. And you know, if you're a parent with kids and you know that. Uh, your kids have a duty. Uh, you you feel like you have a duty to tell them uh, that you need to hold a rifle uh, a little bit differently, and your kids have a duty to tell you, I am holding it right. <laughs> and uh, they have a natural defense against learning from you. And in order to make sure that your uh, that your weekend goes a lot smoother, we usually will have the the parents, you know, a little bit over from the kids, or or even if they're right there beside them, we'll just have instructors who are detailed to instruct the kids and the, the parents so that, so that it doesn't have to happen. And one of the things that I've learned is that when you take a kid uh, and you treat them, as a, you know, when you treat them like a responsible young adult, then they behave that way. And a lot of times, for a lot of these kids, it's the first time that anyone has ever uh, addressed them in that fashion. And uh, the first time that they've ever been somewhere and have been learning something basically on their own, just with the help of just the instructor there. And in a lot of cases, it changes these kids' lives. And uh, and I'm not just speculating on this. I, I've gotten, I've received uh, uh, plenty of letters and emails and phone calls back uh, telling me just exactly that. You know, hey, whenever I came to the, the event, I really wasn't that interested in the shooting, and I thought it was just going to be another thing that I'm getting drugged to. And the kids a lot of times will be sitting back behind the line in their, uh, in their lawn chairs with their uh, earphones on and stuff like that, and they don't really want to participate. But then they'll go through the day Saturday, and there'll be a transformation. And by the end of the day on Saturday, you've got that same kid who was, uh, who didn't want to participate and who was rolling their eyes and stuff, we'll be standing there at the end of the day Saturday with the folks saying, uh, and I'll ask them, I'll say, okay, who's coming back tomorrow? And this family, normally they're only doing one day because they're figuring that's all they're ever going to get out of that kid. And uh, I'll say, who's coming back tomorrow? And the kid turns to the parents and says, can we, can we? And the kids, the parents are looking at me like, uh, I guess. <laughs> not something we thought was going to happen, but yeah. And, uh, and it changes their lives. Uh, so I think this is fantastic for kids. And we've made it, we've made it fairly easy for families to attend. Uh, Appleseed is a not-for-profit organization. And as much as we would like to have everybody come through free, we just can't because it, it does take a good bit of money to run the organization. But in the five years it's been up, we haven't raised the prices ever. It's still $70 for two days of rifle marksmanship instruction. That includes a T-shirt. 
And uh, that's about five to ten times less than you'll pay for most two-day courses. Oh, absolutely. I think when I was when I was originally looking for to learn rifle skills, that was the first thing I noticed is, first of all, I could find were these sniper skills that would have been a giant waste of my time and their time and my money, but they were like five grand. And then I was kind of taken aback when I saw that Appleseed was 70 bucks for a weekend shoot. I mean, that's crazy, especially given the level of instruction and quality of instruction that, that y'all put out. Right. And the 70 bucks, that's just the, that's the top price there. That's if you pre-register. Now, if you, if you try and walk on, if you don't pre-register and you just show up at an event, it's going to be another 10 bucks uh, for two days or $5 for a single day. But right now, it's uh, 70 bucks if you pre-register for two days. Uh, unless you are military or law enforcement. For our military uh, men and women or for our law enforcement officers, uh, we've made the course available free of charge because, because we want our military members and our law enforcement members to be able to make the shot when they have to make it. So we've made the course free for them. Definitely. Also, for women, the charge is only $10. And... Uh, that's already uh, uh, sixty bucks off the regular price, and uh, you know three hundred to uh, seven hundred off the uh, off any of the other courses you'll get. And then kids are only five bucks for them to attend. That's because we want you guys to that have families. We want you to bring your families. We want you and your wife and your kids to come, and we want to make it affordable uh, for you to come. So, right, right about now, our our listeners, we know them pretty well, are thinking. I love this thing. So I got to ask, we've talked about boot camps. We've talked about weekends. What's the best way for them to find out about the next boot camp that's coming to them? Um, I know there's a Texas boot camp coming up. When is the next weekend? Where do they go for this information? Uh, what's the most practical way for them to find out wherever they are? Because we've got listeners all over the place. Okay. Well, the, the easiest way for you to, uh, to find out more about the organization and then to find out where there is an event that's going to uh, happen in your area is to go to the RWVA homepage, and that's at rwva.org, rwva.org. That's our homepage. And on the homepage, there's plenty of good information. There's a list of tabs across the top of the page, and the second one from the left side of the page says Apple Seed. If you put your cursor on that, you'll get a drop-down menu. And on the drop-down menu, you can select Schedule. And that'll take you to a page that uh, I believe it has a, a map of the United States on it. And uh, if you're interested in uh, the events that are occurring in your state, you can put your cursor on the state and click on that. And it'll open another window that will give you the uh, events that are going to happen in your state. If you want to see where they are, and if you're like you're living in a border, uh, 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 border area for the states, then you can click on, uh, there's a hot link in the text above the map for all the shoots. You can click on that, and it'll give you a listing of all the events across the United States. Then uh, once you get to the list, you can look and you can find the event that uh, you think would best serve you. And then there are two hot links uh, on the line for each event. One of them says info. And you click on that, and that will give you the information for that specific event on that specific date. It'll tell you where it's happening, who's hosting it, the directions to get there, and then contact information uh, for the person that's running that event. And then right next to that is another one that says register. And uh, that allows you to pre-register for the event. It'll take you to the third-party software, which is uh, Eventbrite. And that'll allow you to, to pre-register for that event. And one of the things that we're running right now is... Uh, an event is a program called the Rifleman's Opportunity Program. And uh, that means that uh, if, you, if you decide you want to attend an event and uh, you pay the $70 fee or, or whatever your, your fee is for that event, you pay the fee, and then uh, there's another link on the event bright that says uh, RWDA membership. And that just is a... I believe it's twenty dollars for a one-year membership and the uh, and the Revolutionary War Veterans Association. If you go ahead and get the uh, the twenty-dollar membership there, and you go to the Appleseed event and you attend it and you you enjoy it and uh, you shoot to uh, you shoot well, but you don't shoot to rifleman standards. And you go, you know what? I, 
I, I really want to do this. I really want to keep learning. I want to hone my skills and techniques and give myself the ability to shoot to rifleman standards, to be able to, to rule everything within a quarter mile of me, then, then you can take those receipts, the $20 receipt for your membership and the 70 buck receipt for your uh, event, and take it up to the shoot boss and say, look, I want to, I want to keep coming back. Then he'll put a sticker on your card, and that will allow you to attend events free for the next year and, uh, or until you shoot to rifleman standards, right? Because once you shoot to rifleman standards, then uh, we're going to do our best to recruit you uh, <laughs> to become a, an instructor in the program. But it's a great way for you to attend the events at no charge from then on. So uh, everybody, everybody who has an interest in shooting, and especially even if you guys don't have, and, and I, one of the things I see when I'm, uh, because I'm involved myself in the prepper uh, community, is that there's a lot of folks who are they're looking for a way to get instruction in firearms, but they don't know exactly how to go about it. And there's always that, uh, you know, that fear of, uh, of something new and of get, taking a class that's over their heads or getting in some place where they're going to have to deal with an instructor that's, that's going to be uh, a, a upset with them because they don't know what they're doing, etc. This is the course that you need to take. And if you're a law enforcement officer or if you're a person that's going to join the military or if you're already in the military and you're home on leave, this is still the course that you need to take. Uh, for you folks, for you uh, preppers, this is an excellent course for you because we're going to teach you have the fundamentals of rifle marksmanship. And we'll give you enough and the two days that you come will give you uh, enough to set you on a great course to to understanding uh, all that you need to know about rifle marksmanship. And uh, for you folks that have been shooting, we're going to fill in all the gaps of place where you where there's information that you should have but you're missing it. We're going to fill in all the gaps for you. <clears throat> so if you're a uh, a member of the uh, the prepper community. This is this course is is like handmade for you. Oh, absolutely. The, the price is just right. You're going to get two days of rifle safety, rifle marksmanship. You're going to get some history about uh, about the folks who came before you and who set this nation uh, on the course that it's on, not on now, but set this nation on the course to become the greatest nation, and we're going to talk to you about how you can make sure that it stays that way. Part of prepping, it's part of making sure that you survive things is doing your best to avoid that situation in the first place. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk to you about is how you can avoid this nation uh, ending up in the sewer and uh, and maybe saving your your nation and your community and your life in the process. So this course is, is, is one I would highly recommend for any of the prepping community. Absolutely. It, it really is. Aside from the camaraderie and everything else, it's the program is just absolutely tailor made for anybody interested in prepping. So Scout, we talked a couple of times about the boot camp, and just so that people understand what the, what the boot camp is. Can you tell us real quick what that, what that's all about? Right, we've got uh, we've got three types of well, we got quite have more than that now. But with the the three main types of events that we run are we'll have the two day regular uh, Appleseed Rifle Marksmanship course, and that usually occurs uh, eight a.m. to about uh, five or six uh, Saturday, and eight a.m. to five or six on Sunday. And then we have for folks who uh, who want to learn more and who want to instead of uh, spreading this out across uh, five, six, seven, eight, or a dozen weekends. If they want to try and uh, and get everything into one bag in a uh, fairly rapid pace, we have what we call the Rifleman's Boot Camp. And that is eight solid days of uh, rifle marksmanship instruction. And then uh, we're going to have uh, several days of how to teach what you have learned. Because 
The whole point of knowing something is so that you can use it and so you can pass it on. You could be the most brilliant mind in the world, and unless those thoughts escape your own skull, then it, <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered if you were the dumbest person in the world, right? Mm-hmm. Because unless you pass it on, all, all that information in your head is worthless. So they are, our, our goal is always to be able to teach others. And even if you're not teaching for apple seed, you're always going to be teaching somewhere. You're going to be teaching your grandkids. You're going to teach your neighbor, somebody. Somewhere you're going to be teaching, and that's what we're trying to to help you learn how to do at a rifleman's boot camp. It'll run from Sunday to Sunday, and the first the first five days are all about rifle marksmanship. We're going to teach you to to become intimately familiar with your rifle. We're going to teach you to shoot to rifleman standards. Then we're going to have a day where we work out uh, teaching you to shoot at actual distance, and uh, we're going to be talking to you about more involved about inches, minutes, and clicks, and uh, wind corrections, distance, uh, target determination, all of those things. And then on the Friday, we'll have what we call the mock apple seed. That's where you and the rest of your instructor, your uh, attendees, you guys will rotate through acting as if you were actual instructors and you're teaching the course. And uh, then on Saturday and Sunday, the course will have a regular weekend apple seed that will be open to the public, and the folks who have attended the boot camp will be the instructors. They'll be the assistant instructors at that event. So there will be eight days, Sunday to Sunday, and you'll be, uh, for five of those, you'll be working hard and fast at, uh, at attaining and uh, polishing your rifle marksmanship skills, and then your teaching skills, and then you'll put those all of those skills together and use them to teach a two-day course at the end of the event. Here in Texas, our next one is the, the last couple of days of November and the first week of December. I, I'm not looking at my calendar. I actually stepped outside for a minute, but uh, if one of you guys could grab a a calendar and look at that. Yeah, give me just a sec while you're talking. I'll pull it up. That will be the one here in Texas. And uh, I encourage all of anybody who would like to attend, I encourage you to attend. The cost for the nine day, for the eight days is $200. And uh, that is certainly a, uh, a very inexpensive fee for this. But, uh, but if you're strapped for cash and, uh, and you'd like to come, then you can, uh, you can contact me, and we'll work something out. All right. Like I said, we're we're not interested in in making money. We're interested in making riflemen, putting you on the path to becoming a rifleman. So, if any of you guys want to contact me, you're welcome to call me uh, on my phone. It's two five four two one seven one three two five. That's my cell phone, and uh, you can email me at Range Scout, R A N G E S C O U T, one word lowercase, at Hughes, H U G H E S dot net. Range Scout at Hughes dot net. <clears throat> and uh, we'll be glad to put you on the line uh, for the Rifleman's Boot Camp. Or if you just want to attend the event at the end of the, the boot camp, that's, that would be great too. Uh, when you attend the RBCs. You've got eight days where you're where you're working all day long with uh, you know a dozen to two dozen other guys, and uh, it's an absolutely fantastic uh, experience. Uh, here in Davila, it's uh, we we invite you guys to camp out. We don't have a, any hotels or barracks here, but uh, there's free camping and uh, primitive uh, showers and uh, outhouse <laughs> and stuff like that. And, uh, and we invite you to, uh, to take part in this. This is coming up the end of uh, November. And, uh, so it's the 28th of November through, I guess that would be about the 4th of December. Okay, there you go. Yeah, and I will say firsthand, it is, it is quite an experience. And, and for anybody that's thinking, wow, that seems like a lot of time or uh, maybe even a lot of work. It, it's really not. It it is of all the memories in my life. I think that my first boot camp will forever stick out in my mind as one of the most 
amazing experiences I ever had. Oh, yeah, me too. And the only bad thing about it for me was that uh, was that it ended. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you know, I, I, was, I remember sitting there on that, on the Sunday that it ended with all the rest of the guys, and we're all sitting there looking at each other going, oh, what now? Well, you know, <laughs> it, this is just, uh, it's just getting perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it, it's a fantastic chance for you to give yourself a jump as far as uh, learning the, the skills and techniques you'll need to set you on the path to becoming a rifleman. And if you have an interest in becoming a, uh, an Appleseed Project instructor, it will give you a jump on that, too. Mm -hmm. instead, of, uh, instead of going to uh, six or seven or eight events to learn your craft, you're going to learn a great deal of it uh, right there in those eight days. And, uh, and you're going to make lifelong friends, and you're going to learn a lot about yourself. So... Yeah, absolutely. And the price is two hundred bucks. And like I said, I gave out my number and my email and stuff. And we'll also put that in the show notes. And it usually we're going to shoot uh, probably about uh, oh twelve to fourteen hundred rounds. And you guys can bring. Uh, we'll shoot the majority of it at twenty five meters, which means that you can bring a rim fire uh, in order to learn the skills and techniques and save you some money by shooting rim fire at the twenty five meter, and then. Uh, bring your center fire and we'll be able to take you out to the actual distance and you can use all those skills and techniques that you have uh, learned and perfected on your rim fire for uh, just pennies around and you can apply those to your center fire which uh, will run you uh, you know a half dollar to a dollar per round <laughs> and it'll save you some money on that and you'll be able to get all the actual data for the actual ranges for your rifle and uh, and like I said, you'll learn a great deal about your rifle, and you'll learn even more about yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, Scott, you also have your own podcast that comes out once a week. Can you tell us about that? Right now, I have one that I'm doing for the Appleseed Project, and it's on uh, Blog Talk Radio. And you can find it by uh, blogtalkradio.com backslash Appleseed Radio. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I do that every Thursday night at uh, 7 o'clock Central Time to talk about Appleseed's business and to talk about uh, uh, shooting techniques and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then I'm getting ready to launch another radio show that uh, that will go in conjunction with a new program that I'm working out here. Um, the, uh, I do the Appleseed Rifle Marksmanship Instruction, but we do all that for, for rifle marksmanship, and we encourage everyone, uh, if you're going to learn about shooting rifles, to start out with Appleseed. And then uh, i got a new company that we're just uh, going public with now called Battle Road. And uh, Battle Road is a, uh, a company that teaches uh, more of a, uh, a self-defense uh, and uh, combat-style shooting. And, uh, and we're actually getting ready to uh, start with uh, Level 1 and 2 handgun classes on November 12th and 13th. And that's here in Central Texas. So once again, if you want to get, uh, if you want to come and uh, and learn about uh, handgun uh, shooting at uh, in a self defense style, then uh, then you're welcome to contact me for that too. That's in Central Texas, November twelfth and thirteenth for level one and level two uh, handguns. And we'll also put links for all of this in the show notes as well. And uh... And what is real quick for everybody listening? What do you have the website address for your for your new handgun tactical shooting company? We've got the uh, we've got the website up, and it's uh, kind of bare bones right now. But you can still get the information there by going to Battle Road USA one word dot com, Battle Road USA dot com, and that'll give you the uh, uh, some of the course uh, requirements and stuff and the dates and uh, the information and stuff. Well, awesome. Scout, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing with our listeners the, the same joy of apple seed that we have and that we hope our listeners experience soon if they haven't already. All right. Listen, thank you guys uh, for having me on the show. And uh, anybody that would like to learn more about it, you can talk to uh, Aaron and his buddy because they are qualified apple seed instructors, or you can give me a call or email me at the, uh, at the uh, addresses that I put out. Thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you guys again uh, in about a month or two on uh, Appleseed Radio. Absolutely. 
All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Scout. Show notes for this episode, links, and other resources can be found at intherabbithole.com slash E185. Consider helping the show pay its bills and get some awesome membership benefits. Visit ITRH.net to become part of the ITRH Roving Horde Armada. The show is solely supported by listeners just like you. Again, that's ITRH.net. Do it today to help keep this show safe and sound, which helps keep you safe and sound. With that, we wrap up episode number 185 from the Lone Star State. Till next time, stay safe and sound.